I'm Stuart Bloor and this is Twinkle, my Bedlington Terrier. A lot of anglers when they go fishing literally cast out and will take whatever comes along and there's nothing wrong with that of course. On the other hand I'm totally the opposite. I always target a species and I always go for a specific venue as well. And in this particular video I'm going on the Staffsbustershire Canal and I'm after pike and as you will find out that will be a real challenge. Do I catch the fish that I'm after? Do I meet the challenge? Well, let's watch the video and find out. All fishing sessions begin before we actually get to the water's edge. And in this case, I'm in the kitchen. Now I must confess, I'm not much of a kitchen person. And what you're about to see on the screen right now is not a setup. It really happened. I had a go at making some custard earlier today and this was the result. Anyway, on this occasion now, I'm actually going to make some pike ground bait. In this tub that you can see there, I've got some sardine heads. These are from previous fishing sessions. They've just come out of my bait freezer. And as you can see, they start to break up quite easily once I get my fingers into them and mash them up. Not very nice and not very pleasant if you're a bit squeamish. And if you're familiar with Blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. And as you can see, all the fish is now a lovely sloppy mess. And the idea of this is not to have big pieces but to have it in quite a, quite a slop so that when I mix it with the ground bait and the mixer it will attract fish into the swim but not to feed them. And there's the fish and to the fish I'm adding some ground bait. Anything will do. You don't need anything expensive there. Cheap and cheerful is the best. It's basically just a carrier and to bind it together and of course you'll get some of the uh, the pieces of crumb attracting small fish as well and as I often say a crowd attracts a crowd so I'm not bothered about bringing small fish in. So that's well mixed there now as you can see and then I've got some ground bait mixer, predator ground bait mixer and I'm adding that Oh, and if we had smell of vision now, you'd be, <laughs> you'd be uh, amazed at how pungent and horrible that is. But of course, it's not for us, is it? It's all about the fish. So there you go. That's my sticky, gooey mess, which I'm now going to soak overnight. And then when I get to the canal in the morning, I will add some water from the canal and then put it out to hopefully attract some nice pike into the swim. I'm now fishing and I've just added some canal water to the mix and you can see there it's a lovely slop. <laughs> so when that hits the canal it will form a cloud which will gradually fall to the bottom and of course it's the attractor that will do the business. Well hopefully that's the plan anyway of course. Well, I'll show you now, I'm just going to drop some in the margins and I'll show you the, uh, the oil slick that develops. Obviously the sardines are in there and they give that effect. Now all I'm doing here is just washing my hands. Now look at that. Look at the oil that's coming off that. That's definitely going to bring some fish in, isn't it? If they're around. I've got a couple of float fished sardines out there and I'm watching them as I'm talking to the camera. You will notice that I did say if they're around. This is the Staffs Worcestershire Canal and certainly the sections I fish are not noted for pike. In fact a lot of anglers are surprised when they realize that there are pike in here. One of the things that I've done over the years is that I've uh, encountered pike when say I've been fishing for other species I've, I've seen that pike attack come into the swim we all know it the fish clear the water or I've actually come out myself with dead baits and and literally sat there to see if there are any fish around 
you know where the pike will probably be you get a good idea from features and you think to yourself if there's pike in here then this is where they will be so i have put a fair amount of time in over the years uh, trying to locate some pike and i now have several little pockets that's how i would describe them really they're not spread throughout the canal in numbers where you could literally turn up anywhere stick out a dead bait and have a good chance of connecting with the pike they are here but they're here in numbers and that's one of the reasons why of course that we don't always disclose our venues i've put a lot of time in to try and locate these pike i've had i've had fish into double figures which has been reasonable quite decent actually for the uh, for the canal and i'm always getting folks say to me where did you get that fish from well of course if you've put the time in um, then you're under no obligation whatsoever to tell folks where you caught the fish because if i do 10 sessions experimenting pioneering if you like and i locate fish on one of those particular spots that i've uh, targeted no one wants to know where you blanked everybody wants to know where did you catch that double figure pike from so of course no obligation whatsoever to disclose information and certainly in the day and age of the internet we're quite foolish really if we go on the on the web and post locations of where we caught fish so i'm watching my uh, my floats in my uh, inverted commas secret location the idea of my videos the idea of my blog as a whole is not necessarily to put people into swims it's just to encourage folks and if you watch my videos read my blogs and you think to yourself yep yeah, i want to get out there and give it a go for me that's what it's all about i've got some movement on one of my floats it's definitely going off there's something quite exciting about watching a pike float isn't there a little bob the tremble, the shake, starts to move and then it disappears and you're into a fish. Well, I'm not quite at that last stage yet, but it's developing nicely and I'm hopeful. Well, the moment of truth, I'm about to strike. Will I eat that fish or not? Yes. It's not a big one, but as I've already said the challenge on the canal is just to catch one actually so as long as I get this in the net I'll be more than happy walking to the bait on the outside it's only just up but it's coming to the net oh yes brilliant Ready to go back. Oh, there it goes. Fantastic. Do you know how close that was? The hooks came out in the net as I lifted it from the water. That was really close. It's a fine line sometimes, isn't it, between success and failure in angling. I'm just glad that I'm on the right side of that line today. Anyway, I'm about to cast out. I'll show you my, uh, my setup. I'm fishing a, a small float, as you can see there. And above that, I've got a bead, and then I've got a stop knot. And it's very, very simple. I've got a lead there, a buffer bead, and then I've got my uh, trace. So what happens, I cast out, and the lead will sink to the bottom. Obviously, all the dead bait there. And then, what I've done is I've got the stop knot just a, a couple of inches over depth. Not too much because what you want is there'll be a little bit of movement on the water through the wind and all that sort of thing so the float will go up to the stop knot because if you have too much the fish will be uh, the pike will be taking the fish it'll be uh, moving with it and you won't even see any indication on the float so you want it nice and tight now of course the great thing about a stop knot I've got power gum on there is I can move it up and down accordingly so if I fish a, a deeper part of the canal or maybe put one onto the onto the uh, far bank you know the um, 
little shelf that's over there, I can just move it accordingly. But that's important to keep it nice and tight because you want to be in direct contact with the fish all the time and know what's happening. Anyway, I'm going to get a sardine head out this time. That fish was caught on a sardine tail section, so I'm going to get a head section out this time. And who knows, I might get another one, aren't I? But if not, I'll be more than happy with that one fish. I'm watching my floats while I talk. I'm fishing two rods, and that's the thing with winter dead baiting for pike. It's not like you're fishing for barbel, as an example, whereby your rod is motionless, and then suddenly, without any warning whatsoever, you're into a fish. You get lots of indication that there's a fish interested in your bait, and it gives you plenty of time to pull one of the rods out, which I always do, and then put it on the side, so that I'm not gonna get two fish on at the same time. Although having said that, the canal that I'm fishing, I think only once have I ever caught two fish. So if I catch one, then I'm certainly over the moon and I'm one of those happy campers this morning, for sure. The fish that I did catch, you saw the leeches there uh, just uh, previously. Um, obviously it had been lying down um, on the bottom somewhere and picked up all those leeches. But it is a fish that I have caught before. I recognise it's got a very distinctive mark on it. And that's the thing about the canal, certainly this one, where I'm fishing now. Um, there aren't many pike in here. There are, as I've said previously, pockets of pike. And I do get them from time to time. But I also have a few blanks along the way. So I'm more than happy to actually catch one when I've got the camcorder out with me. And as I said, another one would be a, would be a real bonus. But I'll be more than happy with that one fish. We've got some very strong winds forecast. I can feel the beginnings of it now. It's picking up. I've had to get my brolly up because we've also got some heavy rain on the way as well. But that's gonna be this afternoon. My intention is to fish till about lunchtime. So it just works out that I'm gonna miss all of the, uh, the bad weather. But having said that, I'd fish anyway. When you fish in our country, you have to take whatever the weather throws at you and just get on with it, don't you? Well, I've got my floats out and uh, who knows, but if not, I'm more than happy with that one fish. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed making it. I've done another couple of sessions for pike on the canal of course this week and you can find out how I got on by reading the blog that accompanies this video. It has a very interesting title and when you check it out you'll find out what that's all about. But I'm going to end this now with a few photographs from this week's piking. If you're out and about yourself, tight lines and I'll see you soon.